<laughs> YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Kuzi, and welcome back to Phasmophobia. We got a guide for you today, baby. And this is going to be one of a, a harder guide to cover for me because it, it kind of dives into my mind. And if you've ever seen one of my streams or let alone one of my videos while I'm recording live on stream, my mind kind of goes all over the place all over the time. But one of the biggest things that I've been asked from the people that watch my stream is how do you stop playing so scared? I've been very fortunate to only have 160 hours in this game, but I've been able to progress further than I used to because something happened along those 160 hours where I stopped being so scared of Phasmo. So what I want to do is I want to jump into a few contracts, kind of explain my thought process and maybe give you some tips if you're struggling to stop playing Phasmo so scared and um, hopefully help you get to that point where you're kind of like, oh, this game isn't that scary. Now, granted, Phasmo is a horror game and it is scary. And there's still times where the ghost will like pop up in front of me and I'll be like, oh God, right? But there is a point that you get whenever you stop being so scared of the game that you really start to enjoy it. And that's what I want to cover in this video. So before we go any further, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, give me a thumbs down if you don't. And if you want to find your way back for more content like this, you can give me a subscribe with notifications on for more Phasmophobia as well as spooky stuff. I'm also recording this live on my stream. Uh, would love to have you come check me out. The link for that is down in the description. So, in our pitter patter shitter chatter, let's get into it, baby. Okay, so we are starting on uh, Edgefield. All right, and um, we're playing on professional difficulty with a little bit of uh, tweaks in the custom settings. So, um, real quick, uh, we're gonna get all three evidences because we're on professional. Secondly, uh, I have the breaker starting on, and then all of the hunt settings are set to nightmare. So we've got a shorter grace period. Um, and a couple other things with that. But nonetheless, uh, what I want to do is I just want to play like a normal contract here and kind of give you a glimpse inside of my mind, all right? So one of the first steps to stop playing Phasma so scared is to remember at the end of the day, these are just pixels on a screen. The ghost is quite literally AI. Now granted, the people who, the, the developers have done a fantastic job of making, making the game very dynamic, which is why I have over a thousand contracts completed and it's still it doesn't feel like the same game every single time which is why i think phasma has done a great job of replayability but i think you have to understand that if you remember that the ghost is just ai right it's not like actually coming to get you and going to come out through through your computer monitor and and kill you right um you have to like that's what helps me at the end of the day the other thing too is you have to understand that you're the one really in control. Once you understand the whole sanity drain aspect, how to use your curse possessions, how to use the tools that you already have, like for instance, your smudge sticks, your crucifixes, and your sanity pills to, uh, to manipulate the ghost. And once you understand how to use these effectively, it really helps you start taking things into your own terms and start having control over the contract. So right now I'm at 100% sanity. The lights are on, so not so I know my sanity isn't going to drain just naturally, um, and you're good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be uh, looking for the ghost room. That should be the first thing. I think also I'll add that um, staying focused on your objectives. So first thing you need to do is find the ghost room. So grab your equipment. Grab whatever equipment you think is best for finding the ghost room. For me, personally, I like the uh, thermometer and EMF. Um, you can also use your curse possessions, too, to help you find the ghost room. Um, so staying focused on that. And then once you find the ghost room, start grabbing your evidence equipment and start looking for the evidence that the ghost is going to give you, right? Then once you're done with that and you have the initial the initial checklist done like okay i've got the ghost room i've got all of my evidence equipment in here um you can then start preparing okay i've been in the contract for a little bit the ghost can start hunting unless you're dealing with a demon that can literally hunt you at 100 percent sanity but all of that's rng so that just comes with time but once you start once you get all the initial stuff taken care of you can then move on to preparing yourself mentally for the ghost hunting you. And the shoe is moved. So I'm thinking this is a ghost room and I can confirm that because the temperature is going down. So we're just gonna leave that in there. So we have the ghost room. And 
And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab our next round of evidence equipment. Which I like to grab spirit box, ghost writing, and UV. So doing that helps, helps me. Because as a streamer, I like to play this game solo because it allows me to interact with chat. Um, but you can also play multiplayer. Multiplayer is a great way to kind of shake off the, um, shake off the nerves a little bit. But if you're, if you're in a situation where you don't really have friends, that play this game or like want to take it serious you can uh you can join the phasma discord they have a uh, a ton of looking for group channels um and most of the players that i've had interactions with on phasma and random lobbies are actually pretty chill a couple of them are are a little bit trolly but those are few and far between all right so we have ghost riding check for spear box where are you are you here are you close all righty so we have Ghost Riding Spirit Box. So that already narrows down a couple things, all right? The other thing that helps me to not be so scared. All right, well, that rules that out. All right, so it's a mare. I'll get to that in a moment. So playing, that was my chat, redeeming the door noise. <laughs> Thank you, Reed. Um, so with mare, we need ghost orbs. Um, so we can confirm that. So play multiplayer, remembering that the ghosts are quite literally AI. Um, the other thing too, is talking. And if you don't want the ghost to like, get mad at you, you can have push to talk on, which you should anyways if you're going to be playing multiplayer, because nobody quite literally wants to hear you munching on your chips, but it's just a common courtesy. But I found that talking has really helped me limit the, the spookiness aspect of it, right? Okay. So that helps as well. Just just talking, just even if you're talking to nobody, I get a benefit because I'm streaming, I'm talking to chat, and you're just supposed to talk anyways as a streamer anyways. All right, well, we got that. Okay, so it is a mare. How I knew it was a mare, which brings me into my next point, which I'll talk about here in just a moment. Um, but talking definitely helps you. It helps me. I don't know how it works for you, but talking helps me just not get so caught up in everything. It, it helps me stay focused, but in a different way than focusing on the, the scariness aspect of it. If I were playing in the pitch black by myself, not talking to anyone, I would be scared, all right? So you gotta do whatever you can to, to make things a little bit uh, less scary for you, all right? Now, one thing I wanna check for is, all right, it can't be Mimic, all right? So playing multiplayer, first and foremost really helps you uh remembering the ghost is ai all right we got that talking all right thinking out loud saying okay before you even walk into the contract just say what you're thinking so that you have that extra voice going on that you're hearing not just the voice in your head or like your thoughts but like you're verbalizing those thoughts because that's also going to help you stay focused and help you process things a little bit better all right um and then ultimately the other thing that you can do is just, it's just like anything else. The more you expose yourself to something, the more desensitized to it you're going to get. So the more you play Phasmophobia, the more you experience the ghost events, the air balls, because the air balls, the events where like the ghost turns out the light and that ball of mist comes towards you and it's like, ha! Ah. I never used to see the lights go out. I always used to just get the air ball, right? And it used to make me jump every single time, every time. But because i've exposed myself to that and i've put myself through that torture it's allowed me to stop being so scared now i know okay the lights have gone out this is a this is an air ball or i'll be lucky enough to see the air ball coming towards me and i can i can prepare myself for it right so it doesn't catch me off guard do i still get scared of course because there's nothing scarier than when the ghost just wants to start hunting right on top of you right and it's a fucking revenant that's fast as shit and so you can't outrun it and then you end up dying, right? So, yeah, but talking is very important. Um, thinking out loud, exposing yourself to the scary aspects of this game is very beneficial for shaking the fear. The other thing too, and this is a huge part, is knowing the ghost, right? Knowing, knowing about all of the ghost's abilities, right? You've got the evidence, but then learning about each of the ghost's individual abilities. So for instance, we're dealing with the mare. How did I know it was a mare before we got ghost orbs to confirm it? Well, one of the mare's abilities is that it will, if you turn 
on a light, it'll immediately turn it right back off, just like that. So, that's how I know it's a mare. Um, the other thing too, is that now that I know that it's a mare, I can think about its hunting ability. So the, the mare, what it does is at 60% sanity, if the lights are off in the ghost room, it will hunt. I know for a fact because I was just at the I was just at the truck. My truck is at or my sanity is at 80%. So I know that the ghost is not going to hunt me right now, right? I've already confirmed that it's a mimic, which can which can do all of the abilities of the other ghosts. Um, but knowing the ghost abilities outside of the hunt and outside of the evidence that it can give you is super crucial for helping you not know or not not be so scared because they always say that knowledge is power and it's true especially in this game because now that i know it's a mare i know what i can do i know how to protect myself during a hunt how to how to prevent it from keeping how to prevent it from hunting me so for instance the mare if the lights are on in the ghost room jesus christ okay well it turned off the breaker but the mare doesn't like lights so if i kept this light on the mare would change ghost rooms to a room that doesn't have lights on and then if it decided to stay in this room and the lights were on, the mare's not going to hunt until your sanity is at 40%, and that's if the lights are on in the ghost room, all right? So we're chilling right now. Now, granted, the sanity drain is still kicking in, so we're losing sanity. So I'm probably down to like 75% sanity because we haven't experienced like a ghost event or anything like that. But so knowing the ghost, playing multiplayer, talking, exposing yourself to the different aspects of the game that are considered scary and then just like i said learning the ghost learning how to use the smudge stick the crucifix and the sanity pills as your true defenses which they are uh which i will show you that right now so right now we're gonna take a crucifix we'll grab this we'll grab a smudge stick and a lighter because you need that in your pocket to uh fire up the smudge stick so with the crucifix <clears throat> The crucifix has a range, and if you see at the top of the screen, you have this holographic circle thing. Uh, that is the range at which the crucifix will protect, and it varies for each tier. Tier 1 is, like, much smaller. You only get one prevented hunt with the tier 1. With the tier 2, you get a much bigger range, and you get um, and you get two prevented hunts with the, with the crucifix, all right? So the way that you want to do it is if you... If you set it down, right, as long as the ghost is within this radius, the ghost is not going to hunt you. It will it will eat the crucifix instead. So what you want to do is you want to place it in an area that's near the exit because you you don't want the ghost to start a hunt right here. Now, if we if we look, it's kind of going. I mean, this room is pretty much covered, but if you're in a big room, that's one thing to remember because it's not going to cover the huge the huge room. So you want to place a crucifix in a way that's going to prevent the ghost from starting the hunt right on top of like your exit right because positioning is key so we're going to smudge this ghost because smudging the ghost outside of the hunt will prevent it from hunting for 90 seconds unless you're dealing with two ghosts which is the spirit in which smudging it will prevent it from hunting for three minutes and a demon in which preventing it it will prevent it from hunting for 60 seconds okay but every other ghost in the game all 22 other ghosts will be stopped from hunting for 90 seconds all right so i'm currently at 70 percent sanity around that this is this is your average so we have to uh so we got a little bit before the ghost can even hunt us so we're chilling right now but the the ghost can do ghost events to try and drop our sanity and all that stuff but it will not hunt us which means it will not kill us so we're good but the biggest thing that I could that I could tell people on how to stop playing scared is just play the game, expose yourself to um, to the different like spooky events that are scary, right? So that you start getting less scared by them, and then know the ghost. Knowing the ghost is like the biggest way that I can tell you that I think flipped the switch for me for transitioning from viewing this game as just like a horror game to like. It's a puzzle game with a lot of lore, all right? Because once you get past the horror aspect of Phasmophobia, you start getting into the depth of Phasmophobia because every single ghost, all 24 ghosts, have their own unique ability that is very useful to know because it's useful to know to like identify them, uh, to keep yourself alive. Because like some ghosts you can, you can like have them chase you during a hunt and they're not gonna do anything because they're so slow. And then other ghosts, um, 
I don't know. But if the ghost is hunting you with the smudge stick, you can uh, you can fire it up like you can light it, and the ghost will stop targeting you for six seconds. And then if you're using like a uh, like a tier one, that's all it does. But the tier two, which is what you have, which is what I have in my hand, uh, it'll slow the ghost down for six seconds as well. So, all right. So we know that this is the ghost room. I'm gonna turn that off because it wants to play music for us. Um, we have a crucifix here, so we know that it's not gonna hunt. And if it does, at least our exit is protected. But because the range at which this protects is so big, this whole room is covered. So we don't have to worry about that. It's not going to do dots, so we don't really need to worry about keeping that on. And it keeps throwing things too. So this ghost is getting angry. Now what I can do is show you how to protect yourself during a hunt. All right. So let's go turn on the breaker, which I think is in the garage. Nope, it's in the basement, of course. How spooky of you, Mr. Ghost. And there's the bone. So we'll go ahead and pick that up, get an extra 25 XP and 25 bucks. Wait a minute. Is it over here? Yep, it is. All right, turn that on. Breaker's on. And then what we'll do is I'll ask a question on the Ouija board, which is our curse possession, drain our sanity, get the ghost to hunt us. But try not to trigger a curse taunt. Where's the bone? Goodbye. Always say goodbye unless you want the board to break. Alright. So we have this on. So we know that it's a mare. It should hunt here in just a moment. It just did. Alrighty. So, because I didn't smudge the ghost, we've got about a 25 second cooldown before the ghost will start hunting again. But because we have this, the uh, the crucifix will burn again because we have one more charge before it uh, goes away. Or before it's like deemed uh, useless or whatever. Alright. But yeah. So that is... See, now it's hunting. And... I guess it tried to hunt twice or something. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop the ghost, all right? So if, if it's a situation where I don't know what type of ghost we're dealing with, I will loop the ghost and I will check for things like its speed, um, its blinking behavior, or, you know, something like that. Some, some sort of dead giveaway. And then I'll rule it out by process of elimination. Um, if, it's, if it's a ghost that I can't figure out during the hunt, like based on its speed or its blinking, um, I will then try to rely on the evidence. Um, if it's a situation where it hunts before it gives you any evidence. But since we're unprofessional, we get all three evidences, we're chilling. Um, but now, now the hunt's done. And we have our ghost selected. And, uh, we go again. And the other thing, too, to remember, the biggest thing to remember is that at the end of the day, there's always going to be another contract, alright? So... It's fine. It's fine. We're at 0% sanity. So yeah, that would be the biggest thing that I, the biggest things that I could recommend as far as like how to stop playing scared is those biggest things. Actually, the two biggest takeaways that I can recommend uh, outside of playing, um, playing multiplayer because not everybody has friends that, that want to play uh, and you know, maybe you've just had some bad luck with, with random lobbies. The two biggest tips that I can give somebody who wants to know how to stop playing Phasmophobia so scared is A, just play the game. Push yourself through the torture. I mean, you can even set up things like in your custom settings to go down and turn off lose items and consumables. You can do things like go to the ghost tab and turn on friendly ghost uh, where the ghost won't hunt you, but it will do like different ghost events but it won't ever hunt you, meaning it can't kill you. Uh, the only downside is you won't get any rewards if you have this and or this on. So, I don't know. But the biggest thing is just play the game. Expose yourself to those scary elements so that you start desensitizing yourself to it. Transition your mindset from this is a horror game and that's all it is to realizing that there's so much depth to this game and then start focusing on, okay, how can I learn about the ghost? 
Uh, I've got a ghost guide that covers all 24 ghosts and their behaviors to help you easily either rule them out or easily easily identify them uh, that I'll link um, at the end of this video. Um, but on top of that, you can do what I did when I first wanted to start learning more about Phasma, where like I play a professional game, right? I get all three evidences. I know what type of ghosts we're dealing with, and then I let it hunt me. So I start picking up on the hunt behaviors and the different behaviors outside of the hunt that help me realize, okay, it's doing this. Like for instance, I turn on a light and immediately turn it off. It's more than likely a mare, etc. cetera, right? Um, you know, just stuff like that. So those two are the biggest things is just play the game, desensitize yourself, and then knowing the ghost, knowing about all of the ghosts in the game are going to be crucial to helping you stop being so scared whenever, whenever it comes to phasmophobia. But I hope that this guide helped you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, I do stream on Twitch uh, about every day around 8 p.m. Eastern. So uh, if, if you have any questions and it's about that time for you at the time of watching this video, uh, you can come by the stream and watch. Uh, I might be playing Phasmo. I do play other games, uh, but I'm always happy to answer questions and help people learn and uh, and grow in their Phasmo abilities because this game is so fun, man. And it's, and it's so much more than just the game that you want to play on a Friday night with your buddies while you're drinking. Like there's so much depth to it and it's so enjoyable when if you know the ghost and you know about the ghost and can like show off to your friends and then turn around and do things like get the apocalypse challenge done. And then you can be like, hey guys, have you done the hardest challenge in Phasmo? You haven't? Let me show you. Exactly. So I hope that this guide helped you, man. And I hope that um, you can take these tips and start applying them and really start enjoying Phasmo more than just like a good adrenaline pumping pumping horror game all right so anyways if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down if you want to find your way back for more content like this because i got plenty of guides coming for you we're working on them real hard all right uh you can hit the subscribe button again i am streaming on twitch right now at the time of recording this video so uh, i'd love for i love to have you come check me out It'd be awesome to have you so the link for that is down below also if you want to join my discord link for that is right below the stream link so uh it's right there buddy but nonetheless take care thank you for watching thank you for your time and most importantly, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Don't stop being who you are. Be proud of yourself. You're valued, you're loved, you belong in this community. Check out my ghost guide right now, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Take care.